Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of Old Teacher, New Teacher. <laughs> I'm Maggie, I am a high school English teacher from North Carolina, and this is my mom, who used to be a teacher, but is now retired. So tell them about your teaching career. Okay, Michelle, um, I have 28 years experience teaching. Um, 10 or 12 years in preschool, EC. Um, the rest was elementary. A couple years, second grade, and the rest was kindergarten. And this is Dixie, <laughs> who has no teaching experience. Yes, loves to be in the middle. So what we're going to do today is I asked my Instagram people to give me situations or questions um, that a teacher might go through or need advice on and we're going to give you a newer teacher's perspective. I've been teaching for six years and then my mom's perspective who is retired but taught for 28 years and probably there'll be some common ground and there may be some things that are very different <laughs> so yes. we'll see. Do we want to start off funny or do we want to start off serious? Let's start off funny. Okay so the first one a parent tells you my child never acts like this at home. <laughs> and we're laughing because... The first thing you shouldn't say is, Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, and I, I think all of us have had... If you're a teacher, you've had somebody say something like, Oh, well, I've never seen him do that. Oh, well, she's never done this before. Or she never had any problems in Mr. So-and-so's class or whatever. For me, I feel like it's such a hard thing to grapple with because that is what I want to say. Right. Um, and then I always think about, I want to film them and <laughs> show it to them. And but you can't do that either. Yes. <laughs> I mean, when I think about me and I've had people say that, I think the, the biggest thing is I have to take a deep breath. Because I get frustrated that they're wanting to compare, you know, like, oh, they're not like this at home, but, you know, school is different than home. Yeah. When you said about, um, they don't act this way in so-and-so's room, that you could say, well, the expectations may be different in so-and-so's room, mm -hmm. more different than they are in our classroom, um, but you could talk about what some of your expectations are in your classroom. Well, and it's the same way at home. You know, they have different expectations at home than they do at school, too, right? Which is why they're not acting that way right. at home. Because you let them run wild and do whatever they want to. And at school, we tell them they have to sit in their seat. And, and I always like to throw in a reminder. Now, remember, we have... 20-some children in our classroom, too. Mm -hmm. And he's just at home with his brother or sister. And, and, and it's just a really different environment, and, and we have to handle it differently. Yeah. Well, and also at home, you're not asking them to sit in this seat and do this work, probably. So that's another thing that may happen. So I guess my advice would be try to remain calm, try to not get frustrated with it, and just keep explaining to them, like mom said, that home and school are different, you know. Yeah, and you could talk about some little short scenarios of things that have happened at school, you know, to you, you want to explain the point you're trying to get across. This is what they did when I wanted them to do blah, blah, blah. And I tried to explain to them what I needed. But you, you do have to be calm with a parent. And yes, it can be frustrating because they really don't understand. <laughs> no. They really don't understand what you're expecting. They kind of forget that there are so many kids in the room and they're just interested in their own child. We mm -hmm. got to keep thinking that. They're interested in their baby, no matter what age. And maybe you could come up with some guidelines with the parent you're talking to about, do you think 
he would respond better if we did blah blah mm -hmm. blah. Um, yeah, and, that's good. And maybe help them, um, help them feel like they're helping you fix the problem. Mm -hmm. What they're would you the, suggest? Yeah, what would you suggest that we do? Right. You <laughs> are in. You are in this process with us. Yeah. That's, That's good. always that always makes them feel good. Let's do another one. This is a scary one. Oh no! I don't know that it's scary. <laughs> it says you get a low score on an observation. So if you're not a teacher, or if you're a new teacher, or you're going into the profession, your administration, which would be your principal or assistant principal, or like a lead teacher or an instructional facilitator, any of those kind of people, department chair may come do what we call an observation, which is they come into the room and they watch <coughs> you teach or work with your students. And then they score you based on standards on your state. And they use that to then conference with you about things they think that you could do better or things that you do really good. And sometimes the observations are announced and sometimes they are unannounced. And we know at least we joked about, they like to come at awful times, mm -hmm. it seems like. They like to come, you used to say... Halloween. <laughs> you teach kindergarten, and they come on Halloween. <laughs> when the kids are jacked up on sugar and all this kind of stuff. Or they may come on the day that you're like, I don't have a lesson plan, I'm just going to wing it today. And then somebody walks in. Oh, yeah. So, what would you say if you get a low score on an observation what would be your advice have you ever gotten a low score on observation yes <laughs> the first thing you do <laughs> is you're you cry in the closet you're just cut to the bone <laughs> because you work 24 7 trying to make everything wonderful but we do have to cut ourselves some slack and and know that everybody has an off day um I do hope that your administrator is good about giving constructive criticism mm -hmm. instead of destructive criticism because we all want to do better. And right. if we did not have a good lesson, we want to know how to make it better. If they're catching you on one of those off days or like Halloween or the day before Christmas break, which is when they seem to like to do it at the high school because they want to make sure you're not watching movies <laughs> or like doing nothing um, the day before a break. My advice would be if they catch you on one of those days that you just have to take a deep breath and say, this was not my best. This was a bad day. And I always try to remind people even good teachers have bad days. That's right. And so just because they caught you on an off day doesn't make you a bad teacher. It makes maybe that a bad lesson. It makes that maybe a bad day. Maybe your students were having a bad day. Um, but that doesn't make you a bad teacher. So I would say, yeah, I, I would, when I sit down with my administration about observations and I feel like it didn't go well, I ask them what they would suggest which I think they take as, oh, she wants to improve. Like, oh, she yes. wants to get better. But I will say the administration at my school is really, like, I don't know that I've had a bad observation. I think I did one time, and they said, I'll come back another time. Mm -hmm. Which was my clue that it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. Was not good. Um, but and, and they... They know they're going to hear some excuses about, you know, so-and-so was having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Not just myself, but those children were off their game. They're not usually like that. But I just think you have to focus on this one evaluation does not tell all. Mm -hmm. And I know this really sounds old school. But just remember to be... It's a positive learning experience. Everything is a learning experience. So, as Maggie said, um, you ask them, what would they suggest? Um, do you like the way I did blah, blah, blah? Or do you think it would have been better if I had done small groups? Or, you know, just have a conversation with them and, and hopefully they'll take the time to 
um, help you out. I feel like people get so defeated when they yes. get a bad one. Like, this is it. It's over. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and evaluations happen a lot. Yeah. A lot. And there are a lot of people that you just kind of have to get used to. People walking into your room at any time. Um, whether it's your administration or others that are coming in. Or the district. Yes. <laughs> or just some visitors, parents that are thinking about choosing your school or others that are just coming in to see how you do blah, blah, blah. And my line always was, <laughs> I, I just keep on doing what I'm doing. Oh, this is funny. This one may take some explaining. Okay. <laughs> okay. So a kid busts out a TikTok dance in the middle of class. So this is her explanation. TikTok is that app that I pull up sometimes to show you the short videos. Okay. Okay, so people will make dances on there and then people record themselves doing the dances. I feel like this is, and maybe I'm wrong here. I feel like this is mostly an older kids issue, but I think younger kids use it too. In high school, what they would do is they would come up to the front of the room. This would be like the, this would not be in the middle of class for me. This would be like at the end of class. We're like cleaning up for the day and some people are done, like the last 10 minutes. And they prop their phone up on the um, whiteboard tray that the markers sit in so they can record themselves doing the dance. Because they want to put it on the app. We're not supposed to do the dance in class. <laughs> you are supposed to be cleaning up or blah, blah, blah. Well, and here's, here's what my response always was. If it was the last, like, ten, five to ten minutes and they really were done and they really had cleaned up and it wasn't bothering anybody, I let them. Mm -hmm. Just because it was not a battle that I wanted to fight. You know, and if they it had wasn't done their, terribly suggest right, if it wasn't like nasty, <laughs> which some of them have very bad language, you know, I wouldn't. If they had all their work done for the day, if they had cleaned up, if it was the last five minutes, I let them. Now, if they were trying to do it in the middle of class and they hadn't finished their work, or if it was distracting other people or something like that, then yeah. No. 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 So, what would be the solution then? Um, I mean, most of the time, I try to I try to use humor to make it not so serious. Yes. So, like, if I know the dance, I may do, like, part of it with them <laughs> or whatever. And then they're like, oh, and I'm like, but we can't do that right now. You You're have to supposed do, to be doing blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you have to do that during lunch. <laughs> or we do it at the end. We do it in the last five minutes if you've got your work done. And then they think, they're like, oh. <laughs> okay, right. But, like, by doing part of it with them or whatever, they just think it's funny and yeah. you've diffused it. Whereas yeah. if I go up to them and I'm like, give me your phone. <laughs> Stop doing that. Right? Like, it doesn't help. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know that elementary schoolers would have done, like, would they just dance in the middle of stuff? Oh, yeah. Just break loose right in the middle of the teacher teaching. <laughs> yeah. So what and would you, you have do? to say, okay, we're right in the middle of math. <laughs> and you're supposed to be doing, you're supposed to be listening, or you're supposed to be working with your partner. Um, save that for outside, as you said. Mm -hmm. Give them a time that they can do this. Yeah. And you can share it with all of us. Or when we have show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be glad for you to do the whole We don't do thing show and tell in high school, but I feel like we should. <laughs> they have so much they want to <laughs> show and tell us. So, or tell. Here is an interesting one. I know you understand this one. <laughs> we talk about this one a lot. <laughs> you are asked to be in charge of a committee. When you are already at full capacity and you don't want to do it. Oh, and yeah. I would say, even if you're not asked to be in charge, if you're even asked to be on the committee. So, again, if you are not a teacher yet, um, <laughs> here is something. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> this 
so schools have a lot of either committees or groups or teams. teams that do things for the school. So you have like your sit team, which is your school improvement team. You may have a climate committee. You may have a PTO. You may have, I don't know, <laughs> um, all kinds of these yes. things. And they always need somebody to be in charge of it. And they always need somebody to be on them. And a lot of time what happens is, at least at my school, people don't volunteer because they don't want to do them. And a lot of us get burnt out because we end up doing all of it. Um, which, and at the high school level, I mean, y'all had clubs mm-hmm. too. Like we have clubs and then you have after school activities after school and, and all these other kind of things too. And they always need somebody to do that. We need somebody to do robotics. Yes. We need somebody Chess to club. do prom, you know, all these kind of things. Girls on the run. Yes. So what would you say? Because oh. because the way the person phrased this, it's they don't want to do it. They're already doing too much. They need to just say no. So my advice would be say no. And say no. That's so hard. It's so that hard. Is, it's so hard for me to say no. We both um, struggle <laughs> with saying but no. But just like the question said, if you know you're already covered up, and what, it, what else did the question say? It just said you're asked to be in charge of it when you're at full capacity and you don't want to do it. Okay, there's your answer. You are already at full capacity and you know you're about to blow. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to say no. I'll speak from experience. So I was my school's sit chair, which is the school improvement team, and the chair is the person that's in charge of it um, for two years. And I decided this coming year that I would like to step down and not do it anymore. I've retired from it. That's what I'm telling people. I totally freaked myself out in what my principal was going to say when I talked to her about quitting. Like, I had panic attack, anxiety attack, whatever you want to call it. Like, just cried because I didn't want to tell her because I was afraid that she would be like, no. Or she would try to convince me back into doing it and it's hard for me to say no and all this kind of stuff but I just pulled her aside one time to talk about it in private nobody else around and I said I just wanted to let you know that I am going to step down from sit next year and I will not be doing it and her response was okay and I think sometimes we maybe make it a bigger deal than it is like in our mind yeah but I would also say. say When you talk to the person, make sure you're talking to them in private. And I would talk to them in person. I wouldn't send them an email. I wouldn't IM about it. I wouldn't talk on the phone. Like, if you could talk to them in person, I would talk to them in person. And I would, you know, the thing we always talk about is that we feel like we have to explain why we don't want to do it or that we can't do it. But, I mean, if you just say, I'm already doing a lot of things, and I'm not interested in this position, done. And then I would say, if they just keep going at it, I would just continue to say, no, I'm not interested. No, I'm not interested. No, I'm not interested. (laughs) And they may come back to you and say, well, everybody has to have an additional job. And... You don't, you know, you, you may be kind of forced to take on a little something extra. My thing I would say though, is if your school makes you do duties or clubs or be on a committee or something, um, and you know that when you join the school, I would go ahead and pick something I like. Yeah. Like if you're into robotics and you know, there's a robotics club, go ahead and tell them you'll help with that. And then maybe they can't rope you into Something else that you're not interested in. Yeah, or or something crazy like that. You, uh, unfortunately, with schools, you do have lots of extra little jobs that come with the territory. Uh, Things that you don't get paid for that are just part of the job. And whether it's elementary or high school or whatever, those jobs are always there. They may be a little different. But they're always there. All right, we'll do one more. And I don't know if you hear this in elementary school or not, but this is one we hear a lot in high school 
and I would assume middle school. Why do I have to do this? It's not like I'm going to use it in the future. And this is for the teachers, right? And the teachers are saying this. No, this is kids. Oh, they're this saying is what, kids. They're saying, saying what would you say? What would you say or do to a kid who says, "Why do I have to do this? It's not like I'm going to use it in the future." So I teach English. So my response is always, and I have this up in my classroom. It says, "I can't wait to hire somebody who doesn't know how to read and write." <laughs> Said no employer ever. <laughs> um, so I always tie it back to, "You're going to have to know how to read stuff. You're going to have to know how to understand the stuff you're reading. You're going to have to know how to write. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to know how to talk about the things you're reading and writing, and you're going to have to know how to." talk with people and prove your point, which we do a lot in English class. So I always tie back to that. When I think about this, I think about like science classes and like higher level math classes. Like when do we use trigonometry or the moon cycles? But you know what? They have no idea what they're going to need right. when they're adults. Um, they have no idea how things might change and they might go into um, an area or a job career that they had no plans. Um, so they really have no idea what they're going to need. Like so having all the best, options open. Yes. The best thing for them to do, and it's part of their curriculum that they have to learn, the best thing for them to do is to do the best they can at every uh, subject, every situation, put all this information, as we used to say, in our toolbox, <laughs> and then you'll have it when you need it. That's just all I can come up with. I thought you were going to say, some teachers may say, why do I have to learn this? <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, too, when we do professional development, yes, when they bring somebody in and we think the same thing, yeah. Why am I having to do this? This has nothing to do with me. We always say, you know who's the worst students? Yes. Teachers. Unfortunately. Teachers are the worst students. And, but that also helps you to put yourself in a child's place. Mm -hmm. You know, remind yourself. Well, at I, that workshop the other day, you weren't real happy about being <laughs> there. And so now... We're relating it to this child who just came up with this question. Well, and I always think about whenever we have a workshop that's like all day and you have to sit in your seat and be quiet and pay attention all day except for your bathroom breaks or lunch breaks or whatever. And not be on your phone. Yeah, and not be, and be paying attention. <laughs> Don't talk to your neighbor. No side, no side conversations. <laughs> well, and just make eyes at people. <laughs> Well, what I was going to say is I think about that and then I apply it to the kids and think about how hard it is for them to do the same thing. Yeah. And they have a smaller attention span than we do. And we're professionals. Yeah. There you go. That's it. We're not perfect. <laughs> Teachers. They're not perfect. <laughs> but they try hard. They try really hard. <laughs> All right. So that's it for this one. Hopefully... This was helpful. I don't know. It's mostly just us talking. We this talk about we do all the time. We talk about the all we the time. We just don't film ourselves talking about it. If you have any questions or scenarios that you would like for us to talk about, maybe in the next episode, you can leave them down in the comments and we will add them to the list to do in the future if this is popular. If no one likes it, we may do it anyway because <laughs> We enjoy it. We enjoy each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, make sure that you subscribe if you want to see more content. We'll see you next time. Bye. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>